All right, so this week we got food. Uh, I have a meat cube demo for you as well as a bread uh, demo that I painted. Um, so I'll fast forward to the end here. You can kind of see what this cube looks like at the end. Um, fun fact about this one, I was horribly sick with some sort of sto stomach virus when I painted this as a demo <laughs> for my class and it it was torture. Uh, it was really one of the, like, I'll never forget this cube. But, um, you know, this was actually a few years ago. Uh, that's why it's done on a Mac. Um, but uh, I feel like this is one of the more successful demos. And this is one where it's just more straight up painting and a lot less of like the uh, lasso tool tricks and, and that kind of stuff that I that I normally do. So um, it's about an hour long painting that I will speed up to, you know, 15 or 20 minutes. So it's digestible for you guys. Get it? Digestible. Okay. Um, and yeah, I'm going to try to do this one and then I'm going to follow up with the bread cube right after it. Oh, and I think I have an orange cube too, if I have that demo. So I might, I'm, my goal is this week to try to get you guys these demos as, uh, as soon as possible. Um, uh, it's been sort of, uh, there's been a lot of delays with how I've been releasing videos. So trying to fix that this week and get everything back on track. So, um, all right, without further ado, let's, let's get this one going. I'll put some music on too. So with this one, I'm doing the... What I, what I normally do, I'm getting the local color in there on a color layer. And instead of drawing this on a separate layer, I'm actually using, because the way that the fat is marble and stuff on this, this piece of meat, um, I'm going to be using the color layer to draw the shapes that are happening on here. So it's basically like this sort of saturated red, and then I'm using a gray to draw where I want all the sort of striations of of the marbles and the meat, the fat marble, whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, and I mean, this is the thing where this this part of the process should take longer than the other parts because you're basically mapping out how the rest of this painting is going to go. So as with anything you do, the drawing portion should be uh, the thing you take your time on. So now I'm coming in with an overlay layer, putting in sort of like, I see over here, there's like some shadow and some layers of the fat. And I apologize if anybody's a vegan or vegetarian for this one. So basically, you know, now that I've got my stuff laid in with that color layer, I'm using uh, an overlay layer to get lights and darks in there. And I'm using the main dude brush for a lot of this painting. And so you can see it's looking kind of airbrushy. But that's okay because I'm going to try, you know, as I go through and paint this, I'm going to be letting stuff sort of blend together. I'm not 100% sure what I'm doing here. What am I doing? I guess I turned it, I switched it from a color layer to a normal layer. All right. So this is where, you know, every time you paint something, there's, there's a degree of, uh, sort of trial and error. So I think with this, I wanted to get it so that there was like an even tone with my values because I'm going to come back in and I'm going to push my light and shadow side, but for general, like blending and things like that with painting, I wanted it to sort of be at a uh, you know, have a, have sort of like a standard point. So that way I don't have to like blend or mix 
colors on the shadow side versus the light side, I can kind of get everything sort of even so it feels really cohesive. At least, yeah, that's what I'm going to go with. <laughs> And so, yeah, I'm putting the light and the dark on that overlay layer. Making it a little bit warmer on the top. Now I've got a normal layer on top where I'm sort of coming in with the finer details. And one thing you'll notice too, like this, the fat has, it's not white. It's got sort of like this yellowish tint to it. And you see that I, that's what I'm putting in here. And I'm switching between using a soft edge and a hard edge. Like that's really what sells the sort of organic quality of this. So I'm, I'm softening my brush by holding shift in the bracket. And then I'm making it hard again to, to give hard edges where they need to be. So like big soft fades and then coming back in and sort of cutting them up with a hard edge. So a lot of this painting is done on a normal layer. So yeah. Because a lot of it's painted on a normal layer, it's, uh, you know, I might not have as much to talk about. <laughs> and if you'll see, it's just all about looking at my reference, you know, not necessarily copying it, copying it directly, but getting what I can out of it and trying to make things feel as dimensional as possible. Wherever I put in a shadow, I'm going to have uh, mid-tone and a light and it just depends on where it is in relation to the light source how bright those get okay and now I'm coming in I just used the main uh, sketch brush to put a little bit of uh, sort of stippling on the top break up the the sort of flatness of that digital brush look that round brush look And I'm trying to mix, you know, my, my level of saturation here too, where, you know, it's really important not to make the red parts of the meat desaturated. You want this to be really saturated, even in the shadow. So that means, you know, that they're going to be uh, nice and red. If the, if the meat starts getting gray, then it's going to look like the meat's gone bad. So, and I think that's a big thing for all the food that we're going to be doing this week too, is that the more gray you make something, the more uh, unappetizing it's going to look. So nice saturated colors, I think will be the, the way to go. I'm using brighter values on the top. It's still sort of in a middle value state where the darks aren't getting too dark, the lights aren't getting too light. Aside from, you know, a couple spots like here and here. But it's pretty rough looking at the moment, you know? So now I've got an overlay layer. I just selected the top plane and I'm pushing in uh, with the soft fade, 
a bright so it's it's starting to feel like the top is being hit by the light and i use a warm light value for that so i'm pushing the light and shadow now and so wherever i'm using this sort of darker value um, where it's a little bit less saturated it's only on the fat where it's going to be a little gray, just like in the reference over there, because if it's on the red, it'll look really gross. And maybe this already looks really gross. Who knows? <laughs> but yeah, so this is an overlay layer. I use overlays to push the overall light and shadow and to get, you know, these effects of sort of gloss or shimmer or shine. And pushing that saturation to coming back in putting the striations of the, the meat in there on this overlay layer and putting them in erasing a little bit so that it feels layered thing I'm trying to do is is you know like my reference this fat has sort of layers to it one part sticking out a little bit more compared to others and look this is I'm, I'm so good I'm actually labeling my layers that's cute it's really is be best practice to do that but <laughs> when I do these demos I have a tendency to forget to do that if I'm giving a PSD to, to somebody else um, like when I'm working when I'm working on a project with with other people that are going to have access to my files, then I will name my layers. That's just polite, you know, in a working environment. But when it's just for myself, I have a tendency to forget to do that. Coming in, tightening up details. This is all with the main dude. So I try to have, you know, big shapes, medium shapes, and then I'm working on putting in the small shapes now. So I want this to be cool if you look at it like relatively close, relatively far away. And just like with everything else that I've done this semester, it's not meant to be seen at 100%. Like I'll, I'm gonna, when I would export it, it would probably be about 50% of working size. But that doesn't mean that I, I don't want things to look good when people sort of look at it closer. So yeah, just just a lot of rendering. The way that this is going to feel real is is that you know, relationship of of hard and soft edges. And, you know, one thing to think about, too, is over here, this is fairly desaturated, right? But there's still color happening. There's greens, there's yellows, and there's reds. So keep that in mind. Like, they could still be colorful even if it's desaturated.
So yeah, this is this is one where it ha it's got a lot less tricks to it and more just like straight up painting. And sometimes when you're painting this, you just got to spend the time doing it. I'm using the alt button to while I'm brushing to select areas next to where I'm painting so that I'm getting a nice blend between them. Now I'm coming through, I'm putting in the, I, oh, I named this love, this layer overall lighting reinforcement with the misspelling. But so basically I'm pushing the light and shadow, which is something I often do when I'm painting as well, where I will try to, you know, I'll establish light and shadow and then come back in and push it a little bit more. But this is on a normal layer because I'm kind of just softening things up in the shadow side. Remember that your shadow side, you want that to have the least amount of contrast, uh, the least amount of like highs and lows between your colors and your values so that our eye doesn't stick to the, the shadow. It looks for where the light is hitting. That'll make your stuff feel a lot more dimensional and realistic. So now I've got a screen layer, which is a relatively new layer for, um, I don't know if I've mentioned this in these demos before. Um, so the screen layer basically does the opposite of what a multiply layer does. Multiply makes things darker. Screen only takes the light parts of, uh, you know, whatever's on the layer. Um, I use it a lot for stuff like this, where I want this sort of glossy layer on top of things. It works really well for that. Almost like it's like a piece of plastic laying over it. And what I'm doing is, so I selected the top and I hit it with a bright, uh, almost hundred percent white value and reduce the opacity of the screen till it looked good. So it's at 40%. And now I'm going to erase out of it as I see fit to make this, the top of this meat look like it's sort of glistening under the light because you want that meat to be juicy. And I'm using the spatter brush to erase out of it. I'm doing a little bit on the mid-tone side as well. So having a variety of marks in a variety of layers will really make this stuff feel real. And even on the shadow side, I'm throwing a little bit of a red tone on that screen layer. It's starting to look fairly realistic, but when you get up on it, you can really see how painterly it is. And I mean, I could paint this super tight if I wanted to, but I don't see what the point of that is when it's getting the feeling of this across. And then when you, uh, you know, sort of zoom out of it, it all sort of comes together. So that's sort of my approach to painting in general is that I, I don't feel the need. You know, I, I have a very bad attention span. So <laughs> I, I try to paint things as fast as possible and be as concise with my sort of uh, statements on whatever it is I'm painting. All right, so now I'm, it's pretty much there. Pretty good. Uh, I'm doing my shadow trick. Coming back in, touching it up. One thing that's good to do that it doesn't necessarily come across in these demo videos also is that when I feel like I'm finished with something, I always come back. Like I'll go do something else for, for a little bit if, if time allows. I'll go, you know, go eat some food, hang out with my dog, whatever. And then I'll come back to it 
later on with some fresh eyes and just spend like half an hour just sort of poking around and making those details look a little better. So because of the way I'm recording these videos, you don't really get a chance to see that, but I really recommend that. Like it gives you a chance to see your stuff with uh, new eyes. But anyway, uh, so that was the meat cube. Let me know if you have questions. Uh, let's do code word uh, butcher for this one. All right. See you soon.